Welcome again to Wood Turning with Dick. I have got a bit of Zeracote, which is covered in wax at the moment. It's got a natural edge on the top here. A bit of a crack down the back there. It extends down through here. A bit of a crack through the bottom here. Now, if I gave that to, to a wood turner, a wood turner would say, ooh, nice deep bowl and possibly keep a little bit of the, the white on the side of the bowl. I was thinking the same. But then I thought, having done that sculptural piece recently with the Mali Burr, that I might do something similar with this. But use the square for the first piece, take another piece and another piece out of it. You'll see what I mean as the video goes on. But if I have a reasonable thickness from the outside edge, probably about there, just do a gentle line round there, just to show you for the time being. And then, depending on how big this piece will be, it will depend on what size I've got in the middle. But that's to be explored later on. This is just an idea I've got in my head. Whether or not it'll work, I don't know. But I like these challenges. I like doing something a bit different. So, initially, I'm just going to go and clean up these sides. Stay there because I want to see what colour wood's underneath this wax. I mean, I appreciate that once it's all finished and beautiful, it's going to come up this sort of colour. But I want to see the grain. I want to have a closer look, because it's a bit challenging to see the grain, etc. at the moment. Next thing to do is actually just take a little bit of the face off the top and the bottom. This is my flatter side. This is a bit rough with this here and a bit uneven. So I'm going to put that through the planer. Take a, a few mil off the top there, down to, down to get rid of this. And turn it over and do the other side. But just before I do that, I'm going to try and tidy this up a bit. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you would have seen me with the bog oak and the bark. And, it, and taking that off with a wire brush in the grinder or on a drill. So initially, I'm just going to try it with the drill. See what, see what if that cleans that face up a bit, smooths some of this lost chunks of bark out the side. Maybe fill this crack. Maybe. Just try it with this first. That's going to work, but it's going to take some time. Hmm. I think I might finish off with that because that leaves a nice texture. Beautiful grain. I do like zero coaty. I've shown that to the sander. I've marked on this side what I'm going to hollow out. Well, not hollow out, I'm going to cut that bit of wood out. It's going to be a little bit smaller than that because my parting tool is going to come on the inside of this circle because any wider, and I'll have a hole in the top here, which I don't really want. I'm going to use my old chuck, the screw chuck. It's slightly shorter than that. Beautiful. Draw a 10 mil hole, 10 mil. And then I can look through there, find my little mark there, put that in the dead middle. I glue another block of beach to the other side. And then when I mount that after the glue's gone off, I can put my chuck on that side. Then I can work the hole I want to do with a more secure mounting. Flatten that bottom off and put a quick chuck grip in. It's fairly, it doesn't have to be a huge one at all, but reasonably deep. That'll do. Turn it round. Now I don't really need this on the other side now, but rather than just cut it off, I'm going to put a chuck grip in and then I'm going to cut it off for future use. Freshly sharpened parting tool. That line there is going to be my outside cut. So I'm going to line that up there. Just have a look, make sure that's about right. That should be good. That'll just miss that dent in the top. Thick enough bottom. Looks like I caught it on the saw there a little bit. Ah, oh, balls. That's all right. Clean that up later. All right, straight through. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to mark a little line on here, two and a half inches deep, so I can see as that goes through how deep I am in the wood. Now, if I get to that line, that means I've gone through. So I want to stop before I get there. Do you know what? I think that's close enough. 
so the jigsaw can run around there smoothly. I'm just going to level that off. Then a couple of small drill holes to allow my jigsaw to get through. I've got a fair amount of sanding on the flat wheel, haven't I? Oh well, it's going to be worth it in the end. Got a perfect circle from the parting tool, but over the other side, obviously, I cut that with a jigsaw with a bit of skew here. And am I going to manually do that with sandpaper on the flat wheel and make it round and make it perfectly round? No. Mark across there. The cut about 10 mil this side of that line. Then I'm gonna put that on the lathe. I'm then gonna leave a circle proud and then glue that on. Then I can hollow this out and get this size nice and straight and even. So in actual fact, that's the way I wanna go. Cause that's the size that's getting glued on it. Put that through the bandsaw, mount it on the lathe. I just drilled through for my worm screw. Put it on the other side. That's holding that on there with a couple of screws next to the, next to the worm. As you've seen, I've got a little face plate that goes on it. So that's gonna hold it on nice and securely. All I need to do now is come down about 10 mil. Jackpot. I love solving the issues. And do you know what? I'm actually quite impressed myself with this one. All I'm gonna do now is trim down, go through that little raised up bit Give me enough room to get the sandpaper in so I can sand the whole inside of this once I squared it up with my Robert Sorby. Uh, he's quite a nice solid wide construction on this one. Um, handle could do with being a little bit longer, but it'll do. Trying to get reasonably thin there, and I've still got that to get out. All right, that's pretty even now. I did drop a couple of holes in the base earlier. I didn't catch it on film, and you'll see the purpose for those a little bit later on. And the birds are singing, and I'm sand the ceiling. Almost rhymes, like this sort of rhyme. Birds are singing, and I'm a sing. No, uh, birds are singing, and I'm a sand of ceiling. I actually wasn't expecting this nice a grain in this Zuricote, but look at it. Gorgeous. This is one of Lenore's favorite woods. So I asked her, she said, you know, why? She said, the tones are rich and the grain is unearthly. It's like a gemstone in wood form. So, okay. Let that dry. Then I use the Yorkshire stuff. Now I've just got to take my genius bit of wood off the back of it without catching the Zuricote. Aha! Sand the rest of that off, I think. And look! Ha ha ha! I got it fairly even. That's almost bang on. Awesome. Next job is to make this perfectly round, just completely flat for the minute. Then we've got some drilling to do. Front side should be pretty good, but I just run out, run very thin cut off of there. And then just flatten this back side so it'll fit in my vise in a minute. Just over 6.1. I want 3.5, so that's exactly halfway. So having marked up the middle, I've marked up the, the middle so it's in line with the grain. This is the top near the sapwood, this is the base. And I'm gonna put a three mil bit down through so it comes through nearly all the way, but not quite. So it's a nice long drill bit. That's as far as I can go with it like that. I think given I've got the right direction, I can do that with the hand drill. I'm not gonna take it off of this yet because I'm still gonna put a bigger hole in the bottom here, an eight mil, that only goes down a certain depth. You'll see why at the end. Put the depth, set the depth there. 
because that needs to be it. the rod needs to go in there and hold that securely on there so as deep as I can get and then I've just got to make sure I don't come I don't cut this past because that's quite important so I've put a little line of pencil across there I don't know if you can see that that's my marker done right back on the lathe make this very slightly oval and I mean very slightly just want a, a nice bow over there I'm going to drop a U in here, reasonably deep, but not too deep. I don't want to go down to that, that drill hole. So I've got to be very cautious of that and lots of stopping and checking. I'll cut out the stopping and checking, so I'm just doing the doing the U. When I say U, you know what I mean. You've seen enough of my videos, I'm sure. The, you know, uh, a U shape. Just, it's, it's a U. Actually, just need to check where... The end of that drill comes down to, there you are, right up there. So if I just put a mark in there, then I know that should be the edge of my U. And then whatever's left in the middle, that's going to come out in a minute. I'm not going to push my luck any more, more than that. I'm going to start the cutting out of the middle, which is going to be really quite small now. Balls. Balls. Yeah. Blew that beach apart. A little bit of catch on that. I'm gonna see if I can find that lump. I might. I might get away with gluing it back in. <laughs> and then not sure how I'm gonna remount it yet. Found it. Well, that glued back in, I think, successfully well. <laughs> well chuffed. A uh, little bit, oh, a little bit of a lip there, but that had come off with the sandpaper. But the seal seems pretty good. Super glue and activator and a clamp. Sorted. Lucky with that. Right. Um, button jaws. Return that grip. Sorted. But first off, I'm going to flatten that off. Then... I'm going to put it on the drill press, drill down through here, a couple of holes, enough for the jigsaw blade, and I'm going to put that in the in the vise, jig around here, and take that core out. Then put it in the button jaws and do a reasonably big chuck grip. Problem solved. Chuck that in there. Massive fail on Axminster's part, by the way. I went up there to get a longer one of these, and I did say that doesn't look long enough for the big button jaws. And they said, no, sorry, no, Axminster don't make a long one. Why not? Why make one this size? And why not make one that actually actually fits long enough for there? Look at that. I mean, it's one more section. That was all you need. Good Lord. Well, that's not exactly what I planned, but I can still work with it. Back with my funny little hole. That's just nuts. Never mind, still work around that. That'll do. It's back on. It's not perfect, but then again, I wasn't really expecting it to be perfect. I'm gonna re-round that very slightly. It shouldn't take too much. And then we can play with this side. Righto, that 
I do just nicely. Obviously I've got the other side to do, I'll do that on the button chuck, but I've got a lot of sanding to do now. There's a lot of cracks in this outside edge, which I'm going to glue up. Just trying to find my tear out bit now. The bit I glued back in. Can't see it right now, which is a very good sign. Cool. All right, slow the speed down, do some sanding. I'll come back to you when I've sanded the ceiling. Sand is 400 grit. Let's get that first glimpse of what it's going to look like when it's finished. Some cracks down the bottom here. Hopefully the sander sealer will seal those up a bit. I'm actually going to leave the sander sealer overnight because it's actually quite late right now. So I'm going to put this on, let it dry overnight. Not that it needs overnight, but a nice thick coat. Then I'll denib it. And I won't wax it until the whole thing's finished because it's got to go in those button jaws. I don't want it being a bit slippery. But that grain's coming up quite nicely. Those lovely dark veins. Some more of those cracks I mentioned. Super glue's done its job partly. I'll tell you what, I cannot see that chunk that flew out. I cannot see where it flew out from. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, look at that grain down there. I think that's going to have to stay because originally I was thinking of getting Lenore to gild in here. Oh, look at that. Where will that be? That'll be, that'll be on top. I'm actually getting her to gild in here. You'll see why at the end, why I think that's a good idea. Hmm. Very pretty. It's looking a little bit different to the last time it was on this button chuck. Um, I ran some Yorkshire grit and some ultra, ultra fine Yorkshire grit over this. And um, haven't applied the wax yet. I know there's some wax in the ultra fine, so hopefully it won't be too slippy for the button jaws. Time to do this on this side. Wish me luck. In hindsight, I should have measured the opening on the other side and felt for more of a gradient. I think that's going to be pretty similar once the sandpaper's been through there. Do you want me to go through the process of Yorkshire grit? Let me know on a future video. It's not rocket science, but can be helpful to have some tips sometimes from somebody who's used it before. Yorkshire grit still to go, but slap some of that sand and cedar on to show you the other side. I think this side's prettier than the other side. I might need to turn it around in a minute. Oh, look inside there. Although inside there is likely I'm going to do the gilding in there. I think. I think I'm pretty much decided on that. We will see. Lovely. And the last piece of the puzzle. I glued on an old chuck grip that I had laying around, which fitted beautifully so I could help center it. And it's reasonably centre. All I want out of this is a small ball. I'm going to get that sanded up and finished. I guess I've got some metal rods to polish up measure cut and a bit of wood for it to go on something plain but dark maybe bog oak yeah got lots of bog oak so i may as well use some so after a bit of sanding there's a nice bit of grain in there somewhere but that's going to go in the middle of the piece i made earlier now it needs its final coat of wax but it's got a rather lovely finish on it and lenore has gilded the inside. Doesn't that look lovely? It really does bounce the light, the light nicely. That 
green aside from that originally as i might have mentioned earlier this was all going to be gilded but with that grain being so very lovely and the flow through look at where that comes through there definitely going to keep that not gilded so now i've got to fix that ball in there before i sent it to lenore i measured up and i found some three mil stainless steel rod and i found some four mil pipe that fits in there perfectly. So I've cut an appropriate length piece of three mil and a couple of spaces. And then my ball will go in between. I'll poke that up in there. I'll do my very best not to touch the gilding. I'm going to put the slightly larger one on the bottom. Let's see if I can get you a better view. That glow of light is glorious. I know I keep going on about it, but it is really nice. And I want to try and get this ball up the right way. I suspect, yeah, it's going to be that way. Here comes a challenging bit, getting this in there without scratching it. I'm just going to slide a bit of tissue in underneath that ball, just to lift it up on the little bit of play there is at the moment. I can more easily get this in place. That's in. I've managed to scratch the gold slightly, but Lenore, I did warn Lenore that I might, so she's going to touch that back up under the top. You can see some scratch marks of the gold gilding up, up the top there. But doesn't that look nice? That sits in there nice and securely. Right, next thing. I finished sanding all of this. And the ends. I've got this nice piece of bog oak. It's got a few cracks on this side, but this side's a little bit more perfect. I've only sanded that at the moment to 120. Uh, I'll smooth that up later, but I want to make sure I get the holes in the right place first. Now I've made the base like a mil or two wider than the actual piece, partly for stability and partly I'm going to put this upside down just for a minute, stop my ball falling out. Not that it will, but it's in there quite tight. And the plan is to have that just in line, just inside like a millimetre, like the, this side is, of this. Not quite inside the other, inside the other piece, but just sticking slightly proud. And in order to do that, I need to look very carefully before I make a mark here and drill down my 8 mil. This is the most nerve-wracking bit of the whole thing, I think. Now I've got a pre-made spike out of 8 mil. I actually spiked it up for both ends. Maybe for a nipple piercing or something. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's a little bit wide. Tap that in my hole. Hopefully I can easily get that out in a minute. And then I can line this up with the hole and the edge. And drill down there, just like that. And then I've got some very careful measuring to do. I also got to polish this rod up. I'm gonna get that sanded and get that nice finish on this nice piece of bog oak. It's got some lovely side grain in it. Not that anyone's really gonna be paying any attention to that, but that should come up quite nicely. Give me five minutes. Marked with my stamp for Moth and Mirror, 838. This is the bottom, which I'll put some little rubber feet on the corners. Chocolate wax, not that it matters too much, but it just seals the wood. 
I haven't put any Santa Cedar on there. I have finished everything else, the sides and the top to 3000 grit, because it gives a nice shine on the wood with just the sanding to 3000. And I know this is going to make my friend in Australia, Mr. John Sweetenham, quite jealous. Look at that grain in that bog oak. Isn't that stunning? And the other side. Slightly different, but still just as pretty. That does come up really nicely. Now, putting that to the side for the minute. My polish rods, now these are a proper tight fit in here. It's a 8mm hole with an 8mm. I can't even push them in, so I'm going to tap them in. And this one. The whole depths of these are exactly the same, bar a little bit of dust, which I'll blow out in a minute. If I tap a tap a tap of the stainless steel rod into the bottom of this one, then I can hold it above at this angle to make sure I've got the right length and then cut that long rod appropriately. One polished rod. Now what I need to do is line that up with that. All right, let's get that trimmed back in a sec. That's that trimmed down. So, the is gonna hate me. I've done some damage to the gilding here. Just gonna have to go around the round and retouch some of this. But for the most part, it's intact. <laughs> Oops, sorry, Lenore. So, I think that's pretty bang on. The last little thing, really, is to knock these into the base. And it's pretty much done, aside from some tidying on the gilding. Here we go. Get this around the way, right way I want it. Pop that in there. Put that in there. Hey, 13.2, 13.2, close, we're there, just need some final dusting, a little bit of wax, some attention on the gilding, and we have a wonderful perspective piece that can be displayed 360 degrees. I do, I do need to get Lenore to tidy up that gilding, but otherwise that's looking pretty perfect, happy with that.